This program is an introduction to OSHA's respirable crystalline silica rule. On March the 25th, 2016, this rule was issued by OSHA. Compliance is required for construction industry work locations on June the 23rd, 2017, and compliance is required for general industry locations on June the 23rd, 2018. Additionally, this program will outline what employers and workers can do to prevent overexposure to respirable crystalline silica. So what is respirable crystalline silica and where is it found? It might surprise you to know that silica is a naturally occurring substance and it actually makes up most of the Earth's crust. To identify its size, silica is 100 times smaller than sand on a beach. Respirable silica is actually so small in size, it is not even visible to the naked eye. In the workplace, this form of silica is generated by grinding, drilling, cutting, chipping, and crushing materials that contain silica, such as concrete members. Respirable silica can also be generated by cleaning work surfaces or by the disturbance of any nature surface. It's important to understand the silica rule is designed to protect workers against hazards associated with the inhalation of respirable crystalline silica. Now these hazards include chronic accelerated and acute silicosis, respiratory disorders, lung cancer, kidney disease, and autoimmune disorders. These health hazards are associated with overexposure to silica and are calculated over a worker's work life determined to be 45 years of overexposure during an eight hour day in the workplace. The new permissible exposure limit or PEL of respirable crystalline silica will be 50 micrograms per cubic meter the action level will be half of that at 25 micrograms per cubic meter. The new rule requires employers to implement a written exposure control plan for general industry plants and for construction job sites. The plan identifies the tasks that expose employees to silica dust and the control measures such as engineering controls and work practices to protect employees from exposure to silica dust. The exposure control plan must include housekeeping measures for cleaning silica dust. Are there restrictions on housekeeping measures? Yes, housekeeping may not include the use of compressed air and dry broom sweeping. However, the rule does allow the use of special vacuum sweepers containing HEPA filters. The rule also allows wet sweeping with a broom and the use of floor compounds that keep dust from becoming airborne. So what happens if engineering controls are not sufficient to keep respirable crystalline silica below the permissible exposure limit? The silica rule requires the use of respiratory protection, which protects the employee and effectively reduces the levels of respirable crystalline silica below the permissible exposure limit. So what are the steps the employer and the workers can take to eliminate overexposure to respirable crystalline silica? In general industry facilities, the employer will conduct an exposure assessment. This is done by taking air samples or using objective data to identify which tasks give rise to silica exposure. Employees play an important role here and can assist by wearing a dust sampler during the work shift. As the assessment report is finalized, the employer will share the results with employees either verbally or by posting the results. When the results of the air samples are known, the employer then will prepare a written exposure control plan. The employer must then train the employees according to the plan and then the plan must be implemented. The plan must identify control measures which include both engineering controls and housekeeping practices to reduce exposure below the permissible exposure limit 
of respirable crystalline silica. As mentioned earlier, the plan may provide for the use of respiratory protection and it will require ongoing monitoring. Are there any additional protection procedures? Yes. In fact, to keep all employees safe and healthy, the employer will identify and designate regulated areas in a facility. These regulated areas may only be entered by authorized employees who are properly protected with respiratory protection, which will limit silica dust exposure levels. All right, let's shift gears and let's examine what must be done at construction industry job sites. At these sites, the employer can fully and properly implement what is referred to as Table 1 and avoid having to do exposure assessments since following Table 1 assures the levels of respirable crystalline silica are safe. Just so you'll better understand, Table 1 includes 18 common tasks performed at construction job sites and it includes control measures such as engineering controls and work practices. It also includes housekeeping measures and the use of respiratory protection. So what happens if the employer doesn't follow Table 1? Then the employer must conduct an exposure assessment by taking air samples or using objective data to better identify which tasks lead to silica exposure and develop a written exposure control plan. Even if the employer follows Table 1, it must still develop the written exposure control plan. If not, then the employer must conduct the exposure assessment. Also, to keep employees safe and healthy at construction industry job sites, the employer must restrict access to certain areas where employees are required to do the work. The employer must ensure only the employees who are authorized and properly protected may enter these areas subject to silica dust exposure levels. At construction job sites, a competent person will be appointed by the employer to ensure there is proper use of the exposure control plan. You personally need to know who that person is and where they'll be stationed. So let's again carefully detail items on the written exposure control plan which will maintain the safe levels of respirable crystalline silica. The written exposure control plan must do the following. It must describe the tasks that involve exposure to respirable crystalline silica. It must identify measures including engineering controls and work practices. It must also specify respiratory protection used to limit employee exposure to respirable crystalline silica. The plan must outline housekeeping measures used to limit employee exposure. Under certain circumstances, the new OSHA silica rule requires a medical surveillance program to be set up. In the event an employee is exposed to respirable crystalline silica more than 30 days a year at a general industry facility, or if the employee must use a respirator more than 30 days at construction sites, then the medical surveillance program must be put in place. Under this requirement, at no expense or lost time work to the employee, a medical examination must be performed on the employee by a physician or licensed healthcare professional. The medical examination results must be kept confidential with the employee unless the employee releases the information to the employer and except for summary information that must be provided to the employer. The employer must use this medical information and implement any work requirements recommended by the physician or the licensed health care professional. An example of this would be if the employee is required to wear a respiratory device because the task creates overexposure to respirable crystalline silica. Then the medical professional must tell the employer that the employee can wear the respirator without limitations that could create a hazard to the employee. We have covered a lot of information in a short period of time, so let's again highlight the key points for you. The new OSHA respirable crystalline silica rule is designed to eliminate health hazards for an employee. 
whose exposure remains below the permissible exposure limit for their entire working career measured as eight hours per day for 45 years. Based upon exposure assessments or implementation of Table 1, the employer must implement a written exposure control plan identifying control measures such as engineering controls and work practices along with housekeeping measures and respiratory protection to limit employee exposure below the safe permissible exposure limit. The employer must provide medical examinations to employees who wear respirators due to exposure levels or the number of days they wear a respirator. The employer must identify regulated areas within the plant or restrict access at a job site where only the employees required to do the work and they are properly protected can enter. Now, let's emphasize what you, the employee, can do to protect yourself and your co-workers against overexposure to respirable crystalline silica. Know and understand the task in a workplace or on a job site that could result in exposure to respirable crystalline silica. Use the control measures such as engineering controls provided by your employer and follow the work practices set forth by your employer. Do not use compressed air or dry broom sweeping to perform work tasks for housekeeping. Immediately report to your supervisor issues that cause unexpected exposure to silica dust, such as malfunctioning tools. This will allow your supervisor to take corrective action to prevent exposure. Always wear the respiratory protection provided by your employer while performing tasks requiring this protection. Always stay out of regulated area or an area designated as restricted access, unless authorized to enter with the proper protection. At construction job sites, know who the competent person is. The OSHA Respirable Crystalline Silica Rule is designed to provide a safe and healthy workplace for all employees. It absolutely takes cooperation between your employer, you, and your fellow workers to ensure the full and proper implementation of control measures and work practices that are defined in the Exposure Control Plan. We want to thank you for your attention during this program. And if under the new OSHA Respirable Crystalline Silica Rule, you have any questions or you need more information, speak to the appropriate person on your management team for clarification and for answers.